Hello everybody, Dan here from Sherpy T. This is part three of the series of the first annual Sherp Festival that we had that was located up in Holcomb, Wisconsin. Here's some highlights of that trip. Lots of cool things happened during this time. Had a really, really good time. Special thanks to John Bowie for uh, participating with me. He's the guy right there in that shirt. We used Onyx Off-Road along with Garmin GPS, and we went about 14 miles during this whole adventure. And what you can do in the woods with them is even, and swamps is even, like, as crazy as this. You, there's things you just can't do. You shouldn't be able to do. You can't. Look at how fast he's going. He's going to fly. That's crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> there it is there's flaters right up there on top of the hill that's a fairly steep hill that we're driving up here right now <laughs> Get a picture of your back. That was way more than a couple minutes. <laughs> Did you like it? Oh, God. Loved it. Cool. There's Joe. I believe he is the owner of Flaters. He had a great time. It's supposed to be a five minute ride, and it ended up being about 10 or 15 or 20. Uh, this is the smartest thing to do. Put one leg there and just basically put it down. Put your butt right here and slide down. Oh, put one leg at a time. See, it's much easier than trying to go backwards. Like this? Uh, I wouldn't just do it that way. I would. Eventually, just get your butt to sit. Get your butt to yeah, like that. That's the way I do it. That's okay. You can ask for that. It's a pain in the ass. Yes, like that. There you go. That's the way I would suggest. At one point, we probably had almost 100 people that were watching us. That bridge right up there was actually lined up with people. I wish I would have captured those shots. The ice here is probably two, maybe three inches thick, and it is not that strong at all. I definitely would not walk on this. Again, John has studded tires on the front of this, but it really didn't help a lot because the snow was really attached to the ice and it provided a lot of grip to get it up. So like he just turned around like that? He didn't do that on purpose. Uh, yep. yeah, we Sorry for the camera bouncing around, but as you're driving the Sherp and holding yeah. on to the camera, it can be a challenge. I think the reason that we're getting out so quickly is because of all this snow on the ice.
An unfortunate consequence of driving the Sherp into the ice, the front of the Sherp bent back probably three, if not four inches. Eventually, we were able to fix that using a bottle jack and some boards, and we pushed it right back out again, and she's good and new and ready to go. When we got back to the cabin, looked out the window and saw this, and I had to drive out there and check out and find out what the heck was going on. I don't know what that gadget actually is called, so I'm not even going to say it but it was definitely a unique vehicle. I walked out there and uh, said to him, hey, what the heck's that weird thing? As they looked at me with the Sherp and said the same thing back. Here was attempt number one trying to get up into the air. I was told this is the first time that he tried to fly this gadget off the ice and he was having a little bit of trouble, too much friction, and he had two people on, so he had some difficulties with this year. But eventually they did get that all straightened out, got the whole parachute, I guess it's called, uh, lined correctly. They were able to take another run at it. Notice that side-by-side -side in the background plowing it. The reason he was doing that is using that as a landing strip because he didn't want to have that front wheel catch as he's coming in and flip over ass over tea kettle. Coming up to an end of this video, please let me know how you like this video. Throw me a comment. Click that like button if in fact you did like that button. Take care, everyone. Unbelievable.